What is up YouTube Red Zero 2 here. We're going to do a overview video on the mud down mark today. Let's get right into it. So this is what I call the mud down mark. This has been on my channel since the day I got it. I actually got this for uh, my 12th birthday. It was a mint condition, 12 horsepower. I think it was 38 inch cut running driving cutting mower and it has progressed to this into 2021 um, the bag on the hood and the ammo cans are not what this tractor usually has we went on a mover landing trip down in kentucky and i needed extra storage i'm not a fan of the ammo cans they look hideous and i'm definitely not a fan of the bag on the hood but I haven't removed any of that stuff yet so basically it's a pan frame dynamark chassis that has been stretched two inches in the front with a two by three by three sixteenths front axle for some extra weight it's been all extended with um i think that's 12 gauge or 10 gauge steel um, I believe that's five eighths tie rods. Um, we got 19 by seven by eight sun F's on the front. These are stock like wheel horse front wheels with, um, rock rings that I plasma cut it out. This usually has 24 inch by 11 by 10 D stone swamp, which is on the rear with, 10 inch aluminum wheels from a Polaris scrambler with matching rock rings on the rear out of 3 16 aluminum so you're not bending the beads at all this has a peerless 820 transaxle with the uh, one inch solid axle with uh, ROMS reworks uh, peerless 820 gear set it's the I think it's the number one gear set so it's the mid-range it's not the fastest one they offer but it's the that's faster in stock it's the mid-range gears um hydraulic disc brakes but they do not work it's the setup is janky it's not the setup it's the caliper and master cylinder situation that does not work um i believe i mentioned it's stretched two inches in the front stock wheelbase in the rear it's got this rear rack that I cut and made work off of an ATV, like everybody else does. Um, it's got a fully built Briggs and Stratton Vanguard V-Twin in there. We'll pop off the hood and show that to you. So I bought this motor from a guy that was on a racing mower build and it has, I was told it has ARC, flywheel which it does built of aluminum it's got the high torque starter it's got shaved heads with port work done to it it has roller eagle racing roller rocker roll yeah geez i can't speak roller rockers it has uh flat top pistons which i've had these heads off and they do have that i was supposed to tear this motor apart after ttc last year but I honestly didn't think this motor was going to last this long. So I've just been winging it. Um, it has a cam in it. It has rods in it. Uh, dual barrel intake with dual barrel carb. And I'm estimating about 40-ish plus horsepower. The thing screams. Um, I don't think that there's no doubt in my mind that it actually has the rest of the internals in there i mean it's got a flat top piston like i said it has head work done it has the eagle roller rockers it has the arc flywheel and the high torque starter i don't see why uh the gentleman would lie about any other like the cam and um rods and stuff like that because you're not going to put pistons and leave stock rods in this thing and you know what i mean so the one thing i did have to do is this this flywheel is so light with this being an off-roader you got to rev the piss out of it to get it to move so i actually have a 4.7 pound crank weight welded to the top of my pulley it's a solid one inch thick um five inch diameter block of steel 
I think it's kind of really funny because as soon as I made a mention about my crank weight being on there, somebody, a certain somebody in the mower community all of a sudden had a five pound crank weight on this big bad custom built motor but couldn't, um, couldn't show any proof that this motor was actually real. But we also got rock sliders on here. Um, winch is not hooked up because the ARC flywheel, I have no charging system, which this, um, this Napa battery is, I think it's the 350 cranking amp. Yeah, it's the 350 coal cranking amp has actually survived. I've been able, Kentucky, it was a three day overlanding trip, multiple shutoffs, multiple startups. It still starts up and this was a couple weeks ago. Um, two and a one exhaust. Um, and then for pulley ratio, we have a five inch pulley on the engine with holy pulley mod. And then it's a six inch or a seven inch in the rear with the holy pulley mod. Um, if you're going to be doing the holy pulley mod, which you can see all the holes in there, um, you're going to want to go. I think these are just under eighth inch. Um, I believe three sixteenths is the way to go with less holes um, but this has pretty much eliminated um, the majority of my belt issues I was going through a single belt every single ride with this mower or it was one to two rides and then I had to replace the belt um, my clutch spring is not nearly as tight as what most people's are along with this being a high horsepower motor and I the D-Zone Swamp Witches are a lot more aggressive than these Trail Pros so um, if you get on it the belt's going to slip um, but after I did the Holy Poly mod um, I can get this thing to rip in the mud without it very minimal slip uh, it's been proven by Creepy Crawler, um, Roy uh, everybody's doing it now and it's working out great but so this thing will do a top speed of about 43 miles an hour before uh, my fluid filled tires which uh, the tire front tires are fluid filled to keep the front end down on hill climbs uh, it starts basketballing it back and forth between the two tires and it gets super sketchy uh, it's got stock steering on it it's got the bicycle handbrake um, foot throttle on it uh, these are 25 by 10 by 12 trail pros, I think. Carlisle trail pros. Yeah, 25 by 10 by 12. These work great as long as you got the wheel speed. Uh, I believe I said I got the trail kickers on there. Uh, tree kickers. These are an absolute must um, if you're doing tight trails. Um, tight twisty trails like we like to do. Uh, you need to have those because... What ends up happening is you get a small tree comes in right into here on the tire and it just wants to suck it in and you can't get around anything. This is a lot wider than I usually have it. I usually, the I think the swamp, uh, swamp witches come to about here. So the tree comes, hits this, and then just rolls off the edge of the tire and get around stuff a lot easier like that. Works with a whole lot of other stuff. Um, like rocks and stuff, but I can't even speak today, but Also got some frame bracing back here uh, number one transmission killer on lawn mowers is uh, uh, Flex frame flex so I have quarter inch angle up on the front two mounts you want to use every single mount possible to mount these transaxles or else you're going to break them mr studebaker on youtube he started putting through bolts through the cases because at ttc he ripped them up uh, use as much frame bracing as you can back by the transaxle and your transaxles will last a lot longer well, I really hope the overview on the Mud Diner Mark kind of gave you a little bit better insight. I don't have as crazy as modifications as some people have on their mowers, but the damn thing works and it works really good. Um, 
I know how to drive my machine. I know when I can get on the throttle, when I can't get on the throttle. I've been driving this tractor for about uh, 15 years now. So uh, I've gone through a lot of transaxles and I've gone through a lot of motors before I learned how to actually drive this machine properly to hold up the way it does. Uh, for years and years, I've been able to ride this tractor without little to no maintenance and uh, pretty much zero trail breakage until about a year ago and I started going on more rides and it just recently started having some failures on me. I broke the one tie rod down in Kentucky uh, two times ago that I went and then having belt issues because big motor now. So um, other than that, it's a great machine. If I really don't suggest building a Dynamark unless you have um, fabrication skills because they are a short wheelbase. Um, don't use the Dynamarks that have the bump outs in the tunnel here. You want to use a, uh, a later model like this. Uh, I don't know which year model this is. I really don't care. But also a big thing is Dynamarks are right foot clutch. So if you're one of those idiots that doesn't can't be ambidextrous or whatever you want to call it don't build a dynamark either but i hope you guys enjoyed hopefully this gave you a little bit more insight on the build have a wonderful day and we'll catch you on the next one got the glorious ghetto beautiful ghetto sky we're gonna do a cold start on the mud dynamark um so this has got a fully built vanguard in it with uh, running race fuel. It's got roller rockers, cam pistons, head work, whole nine yards. We'll uh, see if it starts, get it into the garage.